According to a recent study by the Victory Fund, there is a correlation between the number of openly LGBT public officials in a given state and the state's level of LGBT equality. Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly and I am joined by Aisha Moody Mills, President and CEO of the Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund and Institute. Thank you so much for being with Thanks us. Thanks for today. having me. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit, um, first of all, about what is called the equality map. Mm -hmm. And that's where the study that we're talking about talks about the correlation that I just made reference to. What exactly are you finding are the reasons for this correlation and is it happening in more progressive states, less progressive states when we talk about these, equality, these equalities in these states? So we have over 30 states around the country right now where LGBT people still don't have full and total equality. So that means that we are not protected by basic non-discrimination laws. It's not surprising that the majority of those states also happen to be what we refer to as red states in America. They tend to lean more conservative those states also have the fewest number of out elected officials. It's not surprising that when you don't have LGBT people at the table where we're making decisions about policy, then you don't have consciousness in those chambers of people who say, oh, wait, we should treat everybody fairly. We should actually extend equal rights and protections to the LGBT community. So then overall, what is the ultimate goal here so that if somebody is not out that doesn't help or translate much into the world <laughs> of politics and, and laws that are out there. So it seems like there's a correlation in mm -hmm. saying to people, if you are gay, come out, that would help. I'm just trying to make sure. <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a coming out project. Right, I know that, but in terms it's very, of. It's very simple. We, we have conversations that just highlight one thing. Okay. Representation matters. It matters whose voice is sitting in a state legislature. It matters who is sitting in a city council. Because when you have diversity, when you have people who are serving in, a, in the public sector that represent the entire community, you're going to have literal representation of the entire community. Right now, what we see happening, playing out in front of us, current affairs, North Carolina passed a really horrible bathroom bill, anti-LGBT mm -hmm. bill. Not surprising that that bill moved through the state legislative body with not one LGBT person serving there as an elected official to actually push back against it. Same thing happened in Mississippi. There were no LGBT people serving in the legislative chamber there when Mississippi passed a tarble law. Of course, the governor then goes on to sign it. Contrast that with Georgia. In Georgia, we have three out elected officials who are serving in the state house right now. And we've had people on the city council in Atlanta and people serving for you know more than 15 years. The governor there ended up not signing a really horrible uh, anti-LGBT bill into law, and we argue that it is because we have representation. Right. We have people, people who speaking are out, truth to power. People who are sure. out. Yeah. Yep. So what happens next? I mean, what do you want yeah. to see? How do you yeah. encourage someone to come to the table yeah. and make sense of all this in terms of maybe they're not out? And if you're saying that translates and it helps that they're out so that people can see the representation, how does that all work? In, in, so in what we do at the Victory Institute is we are working diligently to recruit more LGBT people to run for offices at every level up and down the ballot all around the country. Mm -hmm. So we have several trainings that we host throughout the year, which are really political boot camps, where people who are interested in running for office come and they learn how to actually be candidates and they learn all the tools they need to win. So that's what we're really focused on is building a pipeline of LGBT leadership so that we have a deep bench. So that in Florida right now, for example, we may only have one person serving in the state legislative body, but we're running for candidates right now to also join him and to represent our community. So it really is about building a bench, about encouraging encouraging people to stand up and to serve and to participate in the public sector and then we do everything we can to give them the skills the tools the resources including fundraising to help them win and what do you find in terms of the people who may not be gay but they want somebody who might be able to train and come yeah. forth and 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 be aware of the relevant LGBT yeah. LGBT issues what do you do with that group or how are you making people more aware so our allies are ever critical I mean for sure the LGBT community has tons of allies who are helping them drive help Helping us drive uh, good policies forward. But what we do at the Victory Fund and Institute is specifically focused on the bench of LGBT uh, potential elected officials. That's our frame of it. And we, you know, we're not training everybody because we don't have the capacity to, but we're really focused on getting more LGBT officials. And here's why that matters. So currently in America, we have about 450 LGBT people serving at every level of government, and that's from the United States Senate, where we have Tammy Baldwin, all the way down to the local Mosquito Control Board in Florida, where we have a guy serving. I mean, this is every level. Right. 
450 LGBT people as our political voice representing us is only a fraction of a fraction of a percent of the number of all elected officials in this country. So out of 15,000, we're like 450. So that's a fraction of a tenth of a percent. Right. We are so underrepresented in the political sector and so underrepresented in the legislative sector. And that's why it matters that we really focus on building political power with our community. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us and giving us that information. Good to see you. Thank you. All thank right. You. Aisha Moody Mills, again, thank you. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly.